What's going on guys, it's Lady B and I am back with more details on the update to come for Town Hall 13 plus I've got a little special information for you that you won't want to miss regarding the newest troop to hit Clash of Clans. Want to find out more? Check it out. You guys have been waiting for it. The new troop to come to Clash of Clans. So I have my barracks here set and ready to go. And you might notice that there's a Town Hall 12 on my base, not my 13. But that's because the new troop coming unlocks at Town Hall 12. In Town Hall 12, you'll get to upgrade it two levels. We'll look at the stats shortly. And then we'll look at the stats for Town Hall 13, which gets an additional upgrade level with the troop maxing out at level three. But the question is, what is it? Let's take a look. And the new troop we have coming to Clash of Clans is the Yeti. He's big, he's furry, he's purple, and he's got a basket full of friends with him. Let's take a look through. We're gonna talk about stats in just a second, but let's get a, more of an understanding of how he functions. So the Yeti's favorite target is any. So this means he'll go for a defense, he'll go for a builder hut, he'll go for a storage. He has no preference, whatever set in front of him, the Yeti is gonna go for. It's a single targeting unit. Now let's continue on and talk about those Yetimites and what they do. So their favorite target is defenses and they cause uh, four times damage. And their damage is actually splash damage. We can see these little guys are super cuddly, but get very angsty when their big friend gets hurt. Hurt him enough, and they will swarm the nearest defense with a terrible purposefulness. So we're gonna see it in action in just a second, but first we're gonna talk about the levels. It's going to be five million in Elixir, for the initial barracks upgrade, and it's gonna take you nine days. So looking through here, the Yeti level one, and again, remember, any of these stats that you see are subject to change. The damage per second that the Yeti uh, produces is 230, and he is pretty tanky with 2,900 hit points at level one, and this is gonna keep increasing. Training cost is 19,000 elixir, and on level one, he spawns eight of those Yetamites. Their damage is 56, and their hit points are 300, so they're not super tanky, but they do get the job done, especially because of the splash damage. And the thing to remember here is their hit points aren't heavy, but you have the benefit of that Yetamite still tanking, so he's doing the work of taking the distraction of any of those defensive units while the Yetamites are doing their job. So the only thing that they would have to worry about are any defenses that are not targeting the Yeti that are in their range. But upgrading to level two Yetis in Town Hall 12 is going to cost you 11 million in Elixir and it'll take you 14 days to upgrade this. Now we do see the increase in damage per second. So we've gone from 230 to 250 and our hit points have increased all the way up to 3200. So we keep seeing this unit getting tankier. Um, the training cost goes up as well. So we're looking at 21,000 in Elixir to train this unit. And for spawned units, for these Yetamites, we actually get an additional Yetamite coming along. So we're up to nine spawned Yetamites once um, the Yeti takes some damage. But let's take a look and also see what increases for the Yetamites. We can see Yetamites go up to 64 damage and we have 350 hit points on that as well. So a nice little increase for level two. Upgrading your Yeti to level three in Town Hall 13, which is the max level, is gonna cost you 15 million in Elixir and it will take you 16 days to upgrade it. Um, but what are you getting with this? So we are getting an additional 20 damage per second, bringing this Yeti up to 270 damage per second, 270 DPS, a lot of damage there. And it continues to move up. It's 3,500 hit points. They're super tanky here. The training cost again, increasing. It's gonna cost you 22, uh, I'm sorry, 23,000 in Elixir. And the spawned Yetis, the spawned units, 
are increasing by one. So we have 10 Yetamites that come out of the basket when the Yeti is being targeted and receives damage. Um, the training time for this is three minutes. And let's take a look and see what else we get with the Yetamites, how much this increases. So the damage again increases for the Yetamites, bringing it up to 72 damage. And the hit points increase a little bit more, bringing it up to 400. So these guys get a little more power here along the way. But the big thing is, we want to see it in action. Let's take a look. I'm going to show you with two different defenses. The Yeti against the Wizard Tower, and then we'll go into the Scatter Shot. But let's take a look how this Yeti fares against a Wizard Tower. Coming up on it, it's taking on a lot of heat. We still don't see the Yetamites going. It does take some time for these guys to spawn. And there you go. When it hits just around a quarter of damage, that's when they start spawning. But he continues to move along and we still don't see anything else coming on. So that means as soon as the Yeti is not receiving any damage, he, the, the Yetamite stops, so he continues to go along. Now he's receiving more damage, and that's where we see the Yetamites coming out one by one, and he continues along going for various targets that he can reach, and then as soon as he dies, we see the entire remaining pack of Yetamites coming out and going after those defenses, but because of the splash damage from that mortar, they die out quickly. Let's take a look how it does against the scatter shot. With the scatter shot, obviously, if you get the Yetamite within that epicenter safe zone, it will be fine. So we wanted to give it the challenge of having something to beat on to see how it handles the DPS of the scatter shot while moving in and how long it takes to spawn those Yetamites. So I drop the Yeti here, no assistance, gonna let him do it on his own. You can see it takes two shots and that brings him just under that, um, that quarter of damage and the Yetamites start spawning, but they're impacted from some of the splash because they're not doing anything. So he comes in, again, no longer taking on any damage. So the Yetamites stop spawning as soon as he hits the center of that radius. And he was able to get through a gold storage and still survive and make it up to that scatter shot. So again, we're talking about a pretty tanky unit here. Um, not as not as tanky as a golem, bear that in mind, um, but a little bit more than an ice golem. So it really is a good funnel tool here. And he continues on. He's able to take out the scatter shot. He's got, he's pretty low health at this point, but He'll move up, he'll take on a couple of other structures, and we see him get targeted, we'll see him get targeted by the cannon moving up and along. And there we go, and this will, again, as soon as he receives that damage, he dies out, and we have those Yetamites coming through and going to target the defense. Now they don't take it down, but they take down a pretty good percentage of that cannon. So this is where using a bunch of these guys and doing something along the lines of a Yeti smash could be really cool because you can see the power of those Yetamites together um, working along as the Yetis are taking damage. Let's take a look at what will likely be one of the biggest strategies to come to Town Hall 13. I utilize the Yetis in a couple ways. I start them off to help funnel, and then they obviously come through with the smash portion, cutting across the base. And let's look here, you can see the Yeti goes down, drop a wizard to help with this funnel here. It's taking on damage from the wizard tower, from the cannon, from the Grand Warden. The Yeti mites come through and they knock out that wizard tower. On the opposite end, I drop another Yeti, starts taking on damage, and once it hits just about a quarter of damage received, the Yeti, uh, the Yeti mites actually start popping out and doing their work to knock out those defenses. So really cool funneling tool. You don't always need a wizard with it. It depends what kind of value you wanna get. So I'm able to start the main smash here and I drop all of my Yetis, the siege machine, I've got the Grand Warden, the King, all working together inside this base 
funneling through. Again, with the scatter shots, um, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're very aware of when you're popping your Grand Warden Tome. I popped it relatively early here just because of the damage they were taking, making sure I keep these units safe because at the end of the day, if you have nothing left in the base when you're starting off, it's, it's not gonna work out too well for you. But what I wanna show you is the power of these Yetis through the rage, and you're gonna see it spread out here. They work in various spots, but under rage, they are just massacring through this base, cutting through walls like crazy. And again, the Yetimites spawning, helping to take out those defenses along the way. But let's look at this nasty spot up here. Look how much damage is here. We have the Town Hall, two multi-targeting Infernos, two bomb towers. We've got a Tesla farm up top here. They're taking on so much damage. And these guys raged up with that main kill squad. Just absolutely power through this. We've got the, the benefit of some healers left over helping out as well. But at the end of this raid, um, you can see my, uh, my Yetis that came out of that CC are working their way along. And yes, we use the new Siege Barracks, which if you leave it, will eventually unhouse some of those troops that you have in later on and they could come out for cleanup, which this does very nicely. But at the end of this raid, we are left over with seven, six or seven yetis. One, two, three, four, one, two. We've got six yetis left over, four that are emptied up on their yetamites, two that still have full yetamites in their basket. And I still have my queen, my king, my grand warden, uh, some additional cleanup troops. And this absolutely powered through it. Bearing in mind, I am not a P.E.K.K.A. smash attacker. I'm not a bow witcher. I always say this. This is not my style of attack, but I'm still able to get through and power through a base with a ton of troop space left over. Let me know what you think in the comments below of this new troop coming not only to Town Hall 13, but to Town Hall 12, the Yeti. And what do you think about the Yeti smash? Do you think this is going to be an, a super overpowered attack strategy? Do you think you'll be able to do it? If I can do it, I'm sure you guys can do it. Is it going to be the biggest strategy to come to Clash of Clans for three-star attacks in Town Hall 12 and Town Hall 13? And do you see any other style attacks that could come out of having the Yeti? Give those thoughts below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you click the thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed to me, please click the subscribe button as well. And you can always turn on the notifications to know when I have more videos coming out. Links to my social media are in the description below. I'll have more Clash of Clans content coming to you, so make sure you stay tuned. Until next time, this is Lady B. I'll catch you later.